Hello. Today I will be talking to you about how to research diseases and clinical cases, how to find the information that you need efficiently and make sure that it's of good quality. My name is Evangeline Reed. I'm the Instructional Services Librarian here at Aurora University. Like I said, this will help you confidently find the sources that you need for your assignments. We'll start by talking about how to find basic information about diseases, and we'll also talk about how to find more advanced information like research articles. An important thing to keep in mind is that the type of information you need for academics is different from what you need for your everyday question. I'm sure you already know this, but I always like to emphasize that we really need to find the best possible sources when we are working on our papers. So that means we need to take a closer look at our sources. What makes a good academic source? There are a lot of things to consider, but some of the most important are who the publisher is, who is putting out this information, who created the information, the author, and how does that information look? So particularly, we're looking for a publisher who is established and trustworthy, and ideally one that fact checks or peer reviews their material before release. Academic journal articles, for example, go through a rigorous peer review process where other experts investigate the material to make sure it's of good quality, that it stands up, the methodology was good, etc. This is really high quality information. But we also see really high quality information from things like government agencies, um, which we'll talk about a little bit more. They're often some of the most official sources for information. The author we want to have credentials on their topic. We want them to be an expert and a very knowledgeable person on their topic. In academics, that often looks like advanced degrees in the area. Um, but sometimes that just means, especially if the author is an organization, that it is a really well trusted organization that has a history of putting out really high quality material. Um, and part of how you can tell the quality of the material is by looking at the sources they give you. How do they know the information they're sharing? Sometimes it is original research or original data collection. In that case, you want them to be really transparent about the methodology. How did they get that information? If they are bringing in information from outside sources, they should tell you what those sources are. And if you click on those links, you should also feel confident in those sources. Um, so what that means is that you often, for most efficient searching, want to start with sources you already know and trust. Um, and the library is a good place to kind of filter out a lot of the silly lower quality material that we can find on the rest of the internet, um, as well as to find things that are otherwise inaccessible. So that's part of why it's really important to take advantage of library resources. Um, but not everything can be found in the library, and there are plenty of other good sources out there. Um, and so that's where we think about something like the National Institute of Health and its associated National Library of Medicine. That is um, basically America's biggest source for medical information. Um, you might think, well, there's the CDC, and they might have information depending on the type of disease you have, the type of issue. Um, but it's also entirely possible that it's not um, particularly interesting to them because of their scope of work. The National Institute of Health, the NIH, has Medline Plus, which is a really easy to read, um, basically a database or a reference work with information about many different diseases, problems, and other health topics. Um, so this is not really super high level, but it is very easy to understand and often will give you the basics you need. They also host PubMed, which you may have encountered before. It is a publicly available database of medical research, and it's often extremely up to date. However, the articles in PubMed should also come up in our library search, Spartan Search. So you don't necessarily have to search directly in PubMed in order to find the wealth of material that's there. I also mentioned Cleveland Clinic and Mayo Clinic as alternatives somewhat similar to Medline Plus, where they will provide you with kind of simple but trusted overviews about various topics. Um, 
this is definitely not going to be your only source for an academic paper. Um, you're probably going to need a lot more, but it can be a good place to start. At the bottom, I also mentioned CDC and the World Health Organization, which is the global um, equivalent of the CDC Center for Disease Control. Um, and they have a, um, a lot of information, but only on the things, like I said, that kind of fall into their scope or are relevant to them. So, like I said, we want to start at sources we know and trust. This is a known and trust source, the National Institute of Health and Associated um, Resources. Another place to start is the library. We have so many materials that we make available to you that are otherwise behind paywalls or otherwise inaccessible. And our search bar here on the home page allows you to search across everything. So it's a really powerful tool to find lots of high quality information. That doesn't mean you don't still need to filter and sort through the material you find to find what's most useful for you, but um, it does take out a lot of the guesswork and a lot of the critiquing that we have to do of what we find on the broader web. So like I said, if you start on that home page, that big blue box is known as Spartan Search and allows you to search across, as it promises on the left, everything. Um, you can also choose to use the A to Z databases list. Um, if you click that link underneath Spartan Search, it will take you to our full list of all the databases, and then you can filter by your area. So you could just see a list of individual collections that are related to biology or related to health sciences or related to nursing specifically. Um, and that can be a way if you want to search in a subject specific database, but keep in mind that then you'll have fewer results because you're only searching in one bucket or one collection. Whereas Spartan Search allows you to search across everything. Now, I really, really, really encourage you to take advantage of advanced search. This is kind of my number one tip rule, um, is that if you are searching and you need to do any sort of more complex search, most of our searches at an academic level are a little bit a little bit more nuanced, you'll want to take advantage of the advanced search. The way to do that is to click that magnifying glass on the right side of the search bar. It opens up a full screen version of Spartan Search. You can see the top of it down at the bottom of the screen here. There's still the search bar, but there's a lot of other things going on. And on the right, there's an advanced search option. This unlocks this page, which may look a little intimidating, but really is quite simple. Basically, what it does is allow us to communicate better with the database, because regardless of which interface you're using, the simple search or this advanced search, you can't search the same way you do in Google. You can't just say, how does Graves' disease impact people, or how many people get Graves' disease? That type of question is not understandable to the database. It's going to basically search for each of those words, how, impact, Graves disease separately and find an article that has all of those words and bring it back to you. It may be useful, but more likely than not, it's not going to be what you're looking for. So instead, what we need to do is think about what it is we're really looking for and break it down. You might be happy to search for just the name of your disease, Graves disease, but you also might want to say Graves disease and treatment. And in that case, that's where this little and comes into play. You're saying you want to find an article that's about both of those topics, both treatment and this specific disease. And is the default, but you can also choose or, especially if a word is, say, um, could be phrased different ways. Or not, if for some reason you're getting a lot of results that aren't relevant to you, saying not in a certain word, you can take those out um, and get back to the things you're looking for. That is a powerful tool, though. Any article that has the word you put in will not come up. You can also choose the field. Basically, where is it finding this word that you're putting into the search box? The default is um, anywhere. And that's really effective in a lot of cases. But the subject option is a really, really useful tool um, for finding things that are actually about your topic instead of just mentioning your topic. Um, and it's especially effective if you use the language of your database. So I'll show you how to find subject terms in a second. You can also limit by date. And this is important because you do not want to find articles that are super old. Um, 
disease treatment frequency, et cetera, is going to change, right? So you might want to put in a start year that's a little bit closer to now. Sometimes your instructor will give you a specific date. Often when it comes to medical and health science things, we're looking at about five years. Now, remember I said the database is just going to look for those words. It literally looks for the individual words unless we tell it that the words are related. So we need to put quotation marks around concepts that are multiple words like Graves disease or United States. This is known as phrase searching and is really, really key to being successful with your search. Once you hit search, you then get results and you can refine your results by filtering them based on what you need. If you're looking for an academic article, if you need a scholarly peer reviewed article, then you can filter by peer reviewed to get articles that fit that that category. But if you're just trying to learn about something, if you just need some basic information, that's not likely to be found necessarily in those peer reviewed articles because those tend to be so specific. Um, so instead, I'd encourage you to make use of some other filters that I'll show you in a second. Once you apply a filter, you can use the lock icon to remember the filter and keep it there. Searching isn't really a one and done deal. Sometimes you have to tweak your search. And if you change your search, I don't want you to have to reapply your filter. So this resource type, we saw it on that last slide as one of the drop downs here, along with creation date, subject. These are really great, and I encourage you to explore them. Resource type in particular is useful when you're trying to get kind of overview of a certain topic. That's where you might look for, for example, reference entries, or you can filter by book chapters. Both of those are usually somewhat successful, if not very successful, for finding the information you need to know to understand a topic. Um, so if you are searching to find some basic information about a disease, I would say starting with book chapters and or reference entries could be extremely successful. Let's say you find an item you really like. You want to save that item. There's a couple ways to go about it. The thing you don't want to do in any library database is copy the URL up at the top of the screen. This, in most cases, will not work. So the same way that you would send the, you know, the, uh, the link to someone if you found a funny video or something, that's not what we want to do. Instead, we want to find the tools built into the system we're using. In this case, under send to, you see there's an email option and a permalink. Permalinks is what it sounds like. It's a permanent link, so it'll allow you to always come back to what you're looking at. Um, or you could choose, because in Spartan Search, you're just going to see information about the article. You aren't going to see the full article. You might see the abstract when you scroll down at the bottom. The abstract is that summary. Often gives us an idea of whether we're on the right track, whether this is going to be useful for us. But to see the full article, you need to use one of the options under View Online. So you can click through to one of those links. It'll open up the full article and you could choose to use the tools like the email or permalink tools in this place where the article is to take you back to the full article. Um, that will look a little different in each database, each place that ha hosts these articles or resources for us, um, but it's often at the top or on the right side. I don't want you to lose your research, so be mindful to do it correctly and when in doubt, you can always ask a librarian. We're available by chat a lot, and I'll tell you more about that at the end. Occasionally, you'll run into something like this. We can't own every article in the world. These databases and articles are quite expensive. Um, so if you find something that you really want that we don't have access to, you can request it through interlibrary loan, which means we will get it from another library. They will send us a copy if it's an article. So with that, you just need to sign in and then there's a request article through TAPASA ILL, which stands for interlibrary loan. And I encourage you to do that. Just be mindful there is a slight delay, a few days so that we can ask another library to help us out and they will send it to you. Sometimes you'll get it incredibly quickly, but more often than not, there is that one to two day uh, business day delay. So when we're searching, we want to think creatively about what we're putting into the box because the database is really just finding the exact term we put in. So let's say we're looking for the concept of treatment. 
Maybe we found a lot of great information, but we still don't understand how this disease is treated. We could say our disease and treatment. And we might get lots of articles, but if we're having trouble, we would want to try new words. And this is where we branch out and think creatively. So instead of treatment, we could say management or interventions. Similarly with prevalence, we could try other words that might be used, um, either things that are just synonyms or words that you think are more commonly going to be used by a medical professional or a person who's actually writing these articles. Because we also want to think about what type of language what type of words might be in the thing we're looking for. So frequency is more informal. I honestly might be less likely to be used, but we could give it a shot. And you'll notice I also say occurs, which is a different form of the word. But that's important because remember, we're thinking about the words that might be in that article. So in this case, I kind of think that that form is going to be more successful. This occurs in 4% of people under 40. That type of language is relatively common and I think could be successful in finding what we're looking for. The same thing can be said for the concept that we're searching for, the disease, the issue that we're searching. Um, sometimes we can think a little bit broadly in terms of categories that it falls into, for example, thyroid disease or a related concept like Graves' disease is one of the main causes of hyperthyroidism. Um, so if you were to look up hyperthyroidism, um, it may be possible that you find something that wasn't coming up for some reason a different way. You also want to think about if there are alternate names for or formal names for the disease or problem that you're searching for. That's where you'd want to try both of those terms. You may have more success with one than the other. The other thing to think about is when you're looking for research articles, one thing that can be useful is to look for systematic reviews, a meta-analysis, or other types of secondary research. This is useful because they summarize many other individual research studies. Um, and so this can help you kind of understand a big picture um, takeaway of what's going on with this topic. The way you would search for this is imperfect, but you would use a word like systematic review or meta-analysis that you think might be used in this article you're looking for and add it, say your, say your concept and systematic review, for example, and you may be successful in finding them. Um, you may be particularly successful if you choose the title. You search for it in that term in the title. In advanced search, you can choose where you search for the item or where that concept is found, if you remember. So that can be really useful. The other thing that is really key to this, to being successful here, is remember that I said that really high quality sources are usually going to be transparent. They'll cite their sources. Where did they get this information? Well, if it's a good source, you can probably go down and find more information in their references. So this is called citation chasing. Basically, you're going to look for the items that they cited, the article or book or whatnot. Um, and if you're ever having any trouble with this, I encourage you copying the title and putting it into Spartan Search in quotation marks. The whole thing is one phrase. We want to find that exact um, phrase. Um, or ask a librarian. We are here and we're really good at finding things. Um, so I want to now go ahead and show you how this looks in practice. So if you are using Okta, there is usually a Philips Library link directly in your Okta homepage. This will take you to the A to Z databases page, which looks like this. It has that big everything Spartan search at the top. And it also has this A to Z databases, um, it has this list of all of our individual collections and you can sort by, for example, health sciences or biology to find databases we think may be useful to you. But I really, really do recommend using Spartan Search. If you come directly to the library homepage, it will look a bit like this. Um, you see the search bar. When you scroll down, you'll get some information that's about what's going on, and then you'll see more tools here. So if you were doing your search, you'd hit that magnifying glass. It will open up this full screen. And then, like I said, I really love using advanced search. 
So we would take advantage of this. Let's say we are looking for Graves' disease. And maybe we want to find a systematic review. We may also want a start date that is more current. I will put in 2017 and let's give it a search. You see chat pops out, you're always welcome to chat with us. There are 71 results. And you can see that this is a systematic review. It's about a more specific topic, but it might be useful for understanding what's going on. Let's say we like this article. If we click on it, we can open it up. We see that it's listed, it's highlighted, that it's peer reviewed. And there's also this available online link, which will take you directly to it. But I usually like to open the actual article because we can, or to open it in Spartan Search, because we can learn something from this. So, ooh, this is interesting. So this is one of those ones where it actually is going to ask us to request it from interlibrary loan. But we can still learn something here. When we scroll down, we see some information we already saw at the top, the title, the creator, and we see this description, which is that abstract, gives us an idea of whether this is interesting to us without having to read the whole thing. Um, and this is also where you see these subjects. I mentioned subjects earlier. To be most successful searching for things as a subject, you'll want to use the actual terms that are from a database. So I like to go ahead and write these down as I'm finding them, um, different terms that the database is using. We want to use the exact language to be most successful. So for example, it looks like Graves disease is in itself a subject heading. These are also clickable. So I could click through and it would take me to every um, resource that has the exact subject Graves disease. Sometimes your advanced search will shrink up like this. You can click this button to expand it and you can see how they have chosen the field. And there's also this option here I usually stick with contains. Subject contains Graves' disease. Now I want to show you a few little tricks now. If you are looking at an ebook, it may look a few different ways. One way um, is that when you open it, it looks something like this, um, where you open an EPUB, it'll say, or sometimes it'll say the PDF, and it's literally just every single page of the book. Um, there's usually the contents on the side, which can be useful, but I like to use this search within tool. Um, and then when I once I've typed in what I'm looking for, it will give me a list of all the results. And you can click through to the individual results to go to the page that it's on. But as you saw before, I'm hoping it'll load. If you ch click the chapter button, it will show you the density in different areas. Um, and so, for example, if one chapter mentions Graves' disease 152 times, that might be a chapter that's really interesting to you, as opposed to one that mentions it three times. And so you'd still do the same thing where you click through to the page where it's at. And in this case, I found a chapter that's about it. This one in particular is a case study of an individual, so it might not actually be relevant to us, but I just wanted to show you how that looks. And when you're ready to save, you can choose to save. Oh no. <laughs> well, let's just say when you hit save pages, you can choose to say this section and it should save whatever section you're reading. Um, so basically it would download whatever it is, maybe three, maybe 15 pages as a PDF for you. The other thing you may run into is something that looks like this, and this can be a little bit confusing, and you probably don't want to download the entire PDF. Um, but if you scroll down, there's usually an option to search within the book. And when we search, we will see a couple different places where that is mentioned. In this case, there is a specific chapter on it. And when I open that up, again, we seem to be getting not a lot of content. However, there is a download button, which then opens up the full PDF. And in this case, it's quite detailed. Um, but we would want to be cautious since this is a older book. It's from 2011. And a lot can change in that time period.
So I'm hoping that this has given you a lot to think about and a lot to help prepare you to search confidently. For a lot of your searching, you will just probably need to put in the name of your disease, maybe filter based on the type of thing you're looking for, maybe add a second term to find a specific concept you haven't answered yet that is required for your assignment. Um, but if you're having trouble, if you need a little assistance, a reminder, you are more than welcome to come work with a librarian. We're here to help you out. There is that chat which pops out when you're on the page, but you can also access it from the library website. There's a chat button that you can click. There's also this help button which allows you to see frequently asked questions and to um, submit a question if we're offline. We'll answer it when we get back. And down at the bottom there, you'll also see a research button, which can be useful with research guides for different classes that you're in. You can also make an appointment with a librarian. You would make it the same way you would with a academic support center writing tutor or subject tutor. It's just that you will choose the subject or the schedule for research with a librarian. There is a link for that on our library homepage as well. So. Today we talked about a lot, but the most important thing to take away is that it's really effective to start with trusted sources. And when we're searching, we don't want to search the same way we do on Google. So advanced search is a really useful way for us to remember that we need to kind of separate out our concepts and not use extraneous words. Um, and which words we're using matters. And we want to think creatively and maybe borrow the language that the database is using, even if it's not those subject terms. What words are people in this field using. And those filters are our friend. Refine your search, get closer to what you're looking for. Don't need to look through all 12,000 results. Let's get down to 20 that are potentially a much better fit. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for listening. As always, when in doubt, ask a librarian. We are more than happy to help. Thank you.